So we're ready for reading today, which is Wednesday, um, March 25th. You need your maple tree and your on the bright side. Maple tree and on the bright side. So hopefully you have those close by and you can grab those. You don't have to fish in your desk for them or not, but hopefully you're, you have those pretty close. Let's start out with maple tree first. Um, we are going to go ahead and start summarizing these chapters so that we can get those kind of finished up. I really, really, really want to work on our book report next week, okay? So we can get through these and, and get them finished up. Um, so try, try, try. Even if we're ahead of you in what we're going over, um, just please try to do your reading and stay caught up with us, okay? So we can start on our book report together maybe on Monday, okay? We'll get it. We'll get there, okay? We got it. <laughs> don't worry. Remember, we're going to do it all, so don't, don't worry. All right, let's look. We talked about um, yesterday, um, chapter 14. Um, as they were playing, Hilda and John discovered that their family might be getting a new baby. So that was exciting. Uh, chapter 15. Um, um, uh, chapter 15, let me turn back to that real quick. Excuse me. On page 108, um, Pete has struck again. And Hilda has had enough. What will she do to get back at Pete? So in your reading, chapter 15, oh boy. I didn't know they do that to cow's tails, but yeah, we read about that. <laughs> okay, uh, so chapter uh, uh, 15, Hilda got an unwanted birthday present from Pete. Instead of seeking revenge, Hilda chose to be kind, okay? So let's look back at um, page 110. Okay. What did she get for her present? A cow's tail. That's right. Um, Hilda shoved, the, I'm on the second paragraph, Hilda shoved the package back into her desk without a word, her eyes brimming. You know, when you're about to cry and you can feel that sting of that tear in your eye with angry tears. She knew who had played the joke on her. It couldn't be anybody else but Pete. So she'd show him. She'd think of something mean to do in return. But did she? Did she do something mean in return? No. In our summary, Hilda got an unwanted birthday present from Pete. Instead of seeking revenge, Hilda chose to be kind. So please include that if you want to include the part about what the gift was, that's fine. That I mean, that's, you know, something pretty significant that you will remember. So if you want to include that, that's fine um, in that. But just don't put Hilda got a surprise for her birthday. Okay. Yeah, you didn't read the, the story. So let's move to chap chapter 16, the blizzard and a surprise. So does your summary say there was a blizzard and we had a surprise? No, no, because you've read, right? From the book, the book says, Hilda walked in a blizzard to get help for Mama. Hilda got stuck in the snow, but Papa came to her rescue. Hilda and her family got a new baby boy. So yes, chapter 14, that was correct. There was going to be a new baby. So that is correct. So, um... The baby boy comes in chapter 16, okay? So I would like tomorrow, I would like to go ahead and work on 17 um, and 18 tomorrow, which will be Thursday, and then we can finish up on Friday what we need to do, okay? So we can work on Monday on writing. So tomorrow, please have uh, 17 and 18 summaries ready. Okay. Try not to assign homework this week. Um, you know, we, we're not, um, it's not that we're, let me, let me think how I'm going to say this. We're going to get to homework, but right now let's just get everything um, smoothed out, get our routines together with um, doing our um, online classes and, um, you know, our remote teaching, our remote learning. This is an adjustment for me as well. 
So um, let's just do this this week, and next week we can start assigning some homework. I may even throw in some seat work at some different places just to keep your um, skills polished and just of what we've been doing. Okay, so let's move from Maple Tree, but remember tomorrow I will summarize um, 17 and 18 with you tomorrow, but please read so that you can have a book report that flows and that you are um, you know, familiar with the text, okay? You don't just want to skim through it because when you have a book report that you are responsible for that the teacher's just going to give you the book and not go over all this with you, you want to be sure that you are planning your time on how to read and how to summarize, okay? So let's go to our On the Bright Side page 38. You had your Dig Deeper from the story of Joseph. I hope you enjoy this reading. This is a um, wonderful lesson taken from the Bible. So let's go over page 38. Let's go over the answers to your uh, check there. Number one, is this story fiction or nonfiction? And how do you know? Okay, so this story is non-fiction. This is not, you know, a pig in overalls, chopping in the garden and talking. This is a non-fiction story. Well, how do we know it's non-fiction? Where does it come from? That's right. It comes from the Bible. And every word in the Bible is true. So it's non-fiction because it's from the Bible. Number two, number these events in order they happened in the story. Draw a star next to the climax or the most exciting part of the story. So you should have ordered. Um, I'm going to put them on the, the numbers on the board, and you can check. You're going to start with, let's see here. I think, I, I think you can see them over here. Number five. I picked purple. Yeah, you can kind of see it. One, three, four, two, and six. So if you're checking your book, five, one, three, four, two, six. So what happened first? Joseph's jealous brother sold him as a slave to the merchants. Number two, Joseph was wrongfully put into prison. Number three, Joseph explained Pharaoh's dream. Number four, Pharaoh made Joseph second in command. Number five, Joseph's brothers realized that he was the ruler of Egypt. And number six, Jacob and his family returned to Egypt and were cared for by Joseph. Now, some things that may be exciting to you may not be exciting to other people or vice versa. So I understand, you know, where this may, we may could have some discussion but star should be beside number five. Number five is Joseph's brothers realized that he was the ruler of Egypt. Number six is the ending. Number six, when they all return to Egypt, that's not the climax. The story's over there. The lesson is over there of Joseph. So number five should be your the climax. Number three, why do you think God recorded this story in the Bible. Why do you think God recorded this story in the Bible? There are a lot of lessons from Joseph. You could have a lot of different answers here. You could have to um, forgiveness. I mean, that's one that pops into my mind immediately, that Joseph forgave his brothers, and he forgave them for what he did, for what they did to him. He could have just said, I don't even know you. You can go starve. But he forgave his family. Um, this is also a lesson in that all things work for good. Just like Romans 8.28 says above that. Um, God knew that Joseph's family was going to need to be saved during this famine. And God put Joseph in that position to be able to help his family in the end. Even though they hadn't helped him. Even though they didn't treat him right. That he was going to treat them right in the end. Because that's what matters, right? Um, you know, it, it's hard sometimes what people say and do to you, and it hurts. And you think, I'll get them back. I'll say so-and-so to them. Or I'll tell so-and-so that they hadn't done their math sheet. They can't go outside. 
So, you know, that we just have to forgive. I mean, we're not perfect. I'm, I'm sure, you know, I've said stuff to hurt people's feelings and no one's perfect. We just have to forgive and, and move on. Okay? Easier said than done sometimes. But let's just pray and ask God to help us. This is a great, if you ever are struggling with forgiveness, um, you know, just can't get that thing out of your mind that someone said or did, read this story. Okay? And that's a good point, um, a good lesson in the Bible to go back to. Let's look at page 39, Light the Way. Another poem, Light the Way. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is not a poem. These are just, um, these are verses written, but they are out of Psalms, so it is poetry. There you go. Um, Psalm 27, 1, one of my favorite verses. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? No one. No one. John 8, 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Psalm 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You know, sometimes we're in the darkness. We can't see what's in front of us. Sometimes when I go home and I'm get out, getting out of my car and I'm walking to the porch, I can't see one foot in front of the other. So I grab my phone and click my flashlight on and I can shine because I'm looking for frogs. I don't want to see frogs. So I'm, I'm trying to be careful and get to the house quickly. I need that light. And in our lives, we need light. Guys, we don't know. We just don't know from one minute to the next. But we, we trust God and we have the confidence in him that he's going to bring us through these things. And I'm not just telling you this. I'm telling myself this as well. We have to have this light. Because if we don't have light, what's the opposite of light? Dark. That's right. I don't like to sit in the dark. Not at all. Not unless I'm sleeping. That's really the only time I like it to be kind of darker. But I, I don't like darkness. I can't see. I can't feel around. From outside, there might be a frog hopping by. I don't know. Too many things. Um, so I really like my path lit up. So what do you think? How can Jesus and his word be like a light or a lamp? It guides us. Just like I need my flashlight um, when I go in the house, I need God's word to guide me. I don't know. I, you know, I, this is, life is new to me. I've never experienced life before. And there are things that come up and, and I need help. Just like I help you with how to do division and reduce fractions, I need help in my life. When I'm scared, when there are things that come my way that I've never dealt with, um, I had never dealt with my daddy being sick before. My daddy was not a sick person until last year, and I needed help, and I needed guidance, and that came from God and from his word and the Holy Spirit just indwelling me, lighting my way every day, okay? So let's look on, on the, to the next page. We're going to work on page 40 today, Escape. Oh, this is an excerpt from Charlotte's Web. Charlotte's Web. I love Charlotte's Web. Such a sweet, sweet um, book, movie, if you've seen it. One of my favorites. I do get a little teary-eyed every now and then. I know it's going to happen. It's not like it surprises me every time. But it's just a very sweet, sweet story of friendship, of love, um, if you've you know seen the movie or read the book. So um, we're going to read a little bit together. And then I'm going to let you finish out um, the rest of the story and do the questions just as before. And we'll kind of, um, tomorrow, we will summarize and go over the questions. Okay? So an introduction. After, the re after reading the title and the author information, what type of selection do you think this is? Yes, it's a chapter because it says an excerpt from Charlotte's Web. So we've talked about that. That means they've pulled a, a a chapter, a piece of Charlotte's Web of the books, not the entire book. It's just a little, a little snippet for us of Charlotte's Web. Does E.B., what does E.B. White's title tell you about this chapter? It's an escape. It's an adventure. It's a plan. It's something that's going to happen. And let's see what else we can find out. Now, I'm going to give you a little background information about the story. Wilbur, who is the pig in this story, was born at the hog house on the arable farm. 
At the beginning of the book, Wilbur's life is saved by Fern. Fern's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Errol, follow Fern to take care of the pig at her Uncle Homer's farm down the road. Fern is a dear friend of Wilbur's. Okay, so let's start page 40. Let's um, start uh, first paragraph there. Let's see. Hello, Miss Lucy. Hey, so if you would read the first paragraph for us together um, on Charlotte's Web, this excerpt for Escape. So Lucy, if you'll begin and read one paragraph for us. Great job, Lucy. I could hear you reading in my head. There's never anything to do around here, he thought. He walked slowly to his food trough and sniffed to see if anything had been overlooked at lunch. He found a small strip of potato skin and ate it. His back itched, so he leaned against the fence and rubbed against the boards. When he was tired of this, he walked indoors, climbed to the top of the manure pile, and sat down. He didn't feel like going to sleep. He didn't feel like digging. He was tired of standing still, tired of lying down. Kind of sounds like me sometimes. I just can't get comfortable. Page 41. I'm less than two months old, and I'm tired of living, he said. He walked out to the yard again. When I'm out here, he said, there's no place to go but in. When I'm indoors, there's no place to go but out in the yard. That's where you're wrong, my friend, my friend, said a voice. Wilbur looked through the fence and saw the goose standing there. You don't have to say, uh, excuse me, you don't have to stay in that dirty little, dirty little, dirty little yard, said the goose, who talked rather fast. One of the boards is loose. Push on it, push, push, push on it, and come on out. What, said Wilbur, say it slower. At, 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 at the risk of repeating myself, said the goose, I suggest that you come on out. It's wonderful out here. Did you say a board was loose? That I did, that I did, said the goose. Wilbur walked up to the fence and saw that the goose was right. One board was loose. He put his head down, shut his eyes, and pushed. The board gave way. In a minute, he had squeezed through the fence and was standing in the long grass outside his yard. The goose chuckled. How does it feel to be free? She asked. I like it, said Wilbur. That is, I guess I like it. Actually, Wilbur felt queer to be outside his fence with nothing between him and the big world. Where do you think I'd better go? Um, I'm just picking one upside down here. Chloe, hey. Chloe, will you start with anywhere, anywhere you like? Thank you, Chloe. I can hear you reading in my head. I can see that, replied Wilbur. He gave a jump in the air, twirled, ran a few steps, stopped, looked all around, sniffed the smells of afternoon, and then set off walking down through the orchard. Pausing in the shade of an apple tree, he put his strong snout into the ground and began pushing, digging, and rooting. He felt very happy. He had plowed up quite a piece of ground before anyone noticed him. How did Wilbur feel to be free? He liked it, didn't he? He liked these, you know, maybe these new smells. I know when puppy gets out, he, he's a beagle. For you guys that don't know, that are listening to me. He can, he finds all these new smells and he is just as happy as he can be to be out and have something new to sniff and look at. He's, he's so happy. Wilbur's the same way here. He's kind of tired of his surroundings and he has somewhere new to be. Okay? Now, uh, we're going to go on over... Uh, page 43. Mrs. Zuckerman was the first to see him. She saw him from the kitchen window 
and she immediately shouted for the men. Homer, she cried, pigs out, Lurvy, pigs out, Homer, Lurvy, pigs out. He's down there under that apple tree. Now the trouble starts, thought Wilbur. Now I'll catch it. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to pick one. Kayla. Hey, Kayla. Can you read The Goose Heard the Racket? Thank you, Kayla. I heard you. The Cocker Spaniel heard the commotion, and he ran out from the barn to join the chase. Mr. Zuckerman heard, and he came out of the machine shed where he was mending a tool. Lurvy, the hired man, heard the noise and came up from the asparagus patch where he was pulling weeds. Everybody walked toward Wilbur, and Wilbur didn't know what to do. The woods seemed a long way off, and anyway, he had never been down there in the woods and wasn't sure he would like it. Get around behind him, Lurvy, said Mr. Zuckerman and drive him toward the barn. Okay, you are going to finish the story on your own, um, just like we would do in class. Um, you are going to read pages 44 through the middle of 49, and you're going to answer the questions on page 49, okay? And we will review the end of the story and the, uh, the checkup there, and then we'll go on to our next story tomorrow, okay? So just guys, be sure you're practicing your reading. Even practice reading out loud. I mean, I'm in here by myself sometimes. And I read. Um, just make sure you're keeping um, those skills polished of reading. Um, not with your head down. Make sure you're sitting up and you're, you're sitting up straight. And you're holding your book up and your, your voice is projecting out. And that you are reading slowly. Not like a robot, but you're reading slowly. Remember, when you have an audience you're reading for, you can't read as fast. Just take those breaths. Use the commas. Use the periods as a chance to take a breath and to um, be able to continue to read because you just give out a breath if you don't stop. It's just one big run-on sentence. So continue to practice your oral reading um, where you are sitting up and you're speaking out um, so that people can hear you. It does. If you even want to um, have mom let you know record you reading and you send it to me so I can see you reading, that's fine. If not, it's no big deal. You don't have to do it. But I do. I I know Miss Upchurch. Why are you calling on us to read? We're not in there. I miss your voices. I miss hearing you guys read. And when I call on you to read, I hear you reading those words in my head. And so that's just kind of a way of us to be able to, to stay together and to, you know, hear one another's voice and do those things. So again, I have all my little aisles laid here and I will process through them all. You know, it may take a day or two to get through everybody and then kind of, you know, go through. But I miss you all so much. And um, I just enjoy in my head hearing you read these uh, passages. So finish up the story, answer the questions, and we'll meet back here tomorrow. So let's see. We have our introduction done. We have Bible finished. We have math finished. We have reading finished. So we would be to language next, I think. So um, if you want to take a break, take a break. If not, just click next video. I'm not sure where it is in the um, order, but language in our day would be next. Okay? So I'll see you in a few minutes for language. Thanks.